So Peter Rabbit is here. Again and again? Yes. Are you filming? Yeah. Already? Yep. You are? Boom. Well, hello. Bruce, why do you shave your head? Why do I shave my head? Because... Well, I'm not shaving my head. Greg's shaving my head. <laughs> yeah, but... Um, I am getting my head shaved because... Um, I'm losing my hair, or I've lost most of my hair, and rather than fight to preserve every last strand of it and fool, try to fool myself, but not anybody else, into thinking that I still have hair, um, by, by trying to grow the remains of it long and stretch it over my head and torture it forward, and, Rather than doing that, I decided to uh, take control, take power over it, say, well, I mean, if I'm losing some of my hair, I'm going to go a step farther and I'm going to get rid of all of my hair and, um, and make my statement that way. So why don't you shave your beard? Because um, my beard, that, that, the hair on my face is not falling out. And uh, I've had my beard for 20 years, and I, um, you know, that hair has stayed with me and is staying with me, and um, I don't see a reason that that's not changing with my age. I mean, it's changing color with my age, but I don't see a reason to change it. So, uh, you know, it's a part of my look, a part of my identity. And tell me who is this gentleman that is shaving your head? What oh. gentleman? Oh, that was no gentleman, that was the bear. Um, that's Greg. That's my my best friend of the last 17 years. Friend or lover? Friend. Why not lover? Oh, we did that already. We don't need to do that again. When we was we it? work out better as friends. And when was it? it? A little bit in 1979, a little bit in 1982. And how did you both meet? Well, um, we were both working in the same building, and we would see each other outside, um, outside the uh, employee, cafeteria. employee cafeteria in um, in the employee lounge. And at the World Trade Center. In different parts of the lounge, and we would both be, be doing the New York Times crossword puzzle. In it. And, um, and then after a few months of just seeing each other across a room, we ran into each other at, uh, at a pier. At, um, a pier where, uh, where men went to have sex and to sunbathe. And we recognized each other from. Um, from the New York Times crossword puzzle. This was on his birthday in 1979. And uh, we've known each other ever since. So, no, we're not a couple, we're not lovers, but my therapist says that we're a kind of a couple anyway. And that uh, with dealing with each other and negotiations and and closeness and difficulties and all that we're a kind of a couple anyway. So Greg, how would you define a couple? Um, the couple is any two people. They don't necessarily have to be sleeping together. We, I mean, many people perceive us as a couple or, or as a pair or something but not necessarily in, in a relationship, whatever relationship means. I once thought of having t-shirts made up for us saying, no, we are not a couple. <laughs> we, we have, we've had matching t-shirts though that, um, The bear shirts that, from the Bronx suit. That say on them, uh, bear, bear, with, bear me. with me. And there's a picture of a bear. And I guess you can read it, you know, bear with me as, Meaning, um, 
you know, uh, put up with me, have patience with me, but you can also read it as the, 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 the bear who is along with me, <laughs> the bear that you see me with. And I think we preferred that, uh, that reading. You know, there's one bear and then there's the, the bear who's with me. Are you a bear? Reasonably, uh, yeah, I'm a reasonably hairy person, somewhat overweight. Um, sort sort of, sort of plump, fully figured. That would think that was the, ex the term that Jane Russell used, although she's not Ple particularly pleasingly good. plump. Yeah, I won't blow away in a strong wind. The line I'm in HMS Pinafore: a plump and pleasing person. That sounds good. Yeah. That will go. Pleasant, pleasant, not pleasing. A plump, unpleasing person? No, no. <laughs> yeah, I'm not a plump, unpleasant person either. You are, you are, you are, you are, you are. That's about got it, I think. Yeah, got all the hairs off. Can we amplify that scraping noise? Good. I, I hope you've caught uh, this bear in some of your filming. Yes, I did. Uh huh. Good. Why? Yeah. Why that bear? Uh huh. Well, it's because he's a leather bear, and uh, and so am I. How would you define a bear? Um, I would define, I think the definition of bear when it refers to a person has a certain amount of flexibility. Um, you know, some mean it to mean a, a big hairy person and um, I don't know, and I just think of it as a hairy bearded person, not necessarily uh, heavy. So, you know, can include pleasingly plump persons too. You are, you are, you are. Thanks for doing my hair as you bears. You are, you are, you are. Yeah, that's clean. Last time I did this was out in full sunshine. And you, you could see anything that you missed very easily. On Fire Island last weekend. That was also the only time I'd, I'd done this to Dave. Huh. On another person? Yeah. Because you do your own. I do my own twice a week. And why do you shave your head, Greg? Mostly because there's less hair on top of my head than there is on the rest of my head. And I just wish the root would all fall out and, and... And I just wouldn't have to deal with it ever again. The beard is, is very much there, and at this point it is pretty much one solid color. Greg, how will you de define love? That's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> this is my brother here. We haven't had sex with him in 14 years, but I love him. Yeah. There'd be a big hole in my life. There'd be a big hole in my life if he weren't here. And I think he feels the same way about me. And we're family to each other. And Barbara and Jane are part of that family. His family is part of... I'm part of his family, and I've always been accepted by his family as being one of them. Um... You know, I guess that's enough of a def definition of love. Loving bears. <laughs> are, we, uh, are we done with this segment in, in, uh, in this room? If you want to. Huh? Yeah, I think change of venue. Also, I uh, do you want to I, change I, I your face? Yeah, I don't know that this is film worthy, and the noise would drive your your machine crazy. But I also want to take the beard down some. Turn it on. Turn mm -hmm. it on. You can. Let's right. see what I do here. I don't know. That's cleaning questions. But no, we're good. Is the cream off from behind the ears? Yep.
this is the sound it will make. Do you didn't use the attachment for trimming? Nope. No, I also don't, you know, go all the way close. But the attachment, I think, puts me too far away from uh, the beard, and I'd rather, you know, judge the distance myself. I use the attachment when I trim that. Yeah, no, I find that leaves too much. Number two comes close enough for me. So. Oh. Yep. I don't even think the one comes as close as I want to go. Yeah, back there in the cat pen. <laughs> Bruce, when were you aware that you were cute? Oh, am I? <laughs> um, not long ago, if at all. Um... I, uh, when I was, um, growing up, I was coming out and, and coming, becoming aware as a gay man, um, I didn't think I was cute at all, but at some point I realized that even if I didn't think I was cute, and even if I wasn't my type, I did okay. So there uh, must be people around whose type I am, and um, and I guess I could live with that. And lucky for me. <laughs> and uh, I don't know. I guess at some point I figured, oh, I guess I'm I'm good looking. I mean, people would tell me. Um, but you don't know how good-looking you are. <laughs> okay, I don't agree. But, uh, if you want to think that. And, um, so I don't think I've let it go to my head. But, um, at some point I guess I did decide, okay, I guess I do look good. And, uh, of course by that point, I could say, gee, I wish I looked this good when I was younger, or I wish I knew it when I was younger and could have, I don't know, worked with it more. Um, years ago, people asked me things like, you know, have you ever posed or have you ever modeled? And, um, you know, or wanted to get me into a posing for pictures, paintings, whatever, uh, or modeling situation. And I didn't, I didn't trust, I didn't trust it, and I also didn't think that it was a reasonable, sensible thing for me. But, well, you know, that's for the, the Jeff Strikers and Donnie Russo's. Not for me. I'm I'm plain people. Are you really plain people? Um. Well, I held up well, I suppose, more, more or less. But uh, yeah, I think I'm pretty much plain people, and then there are people who uh, <laughs> are interested in looking at me at all, and. Uh, you know, to them I must be even plainer people. Greg, is he plain people? I don't think he's plain at all. In which sense of plain are you talking about? Plain like ugly or plain like ordinary? Un... Not in the sense of ordinary, not, certainly not ugly, certainly not in the sense of ordinary either. I mean, if I walked into a subway car and f full of people and, and saw someone like you there, I would say, yes, he looks interesting, rather, rather than, I mean, and, and I would likely remember having seen him three stops later after he got off or I got off or something. Oh, that's because I'm a bear and you like bears. Yeah.
this is certainly, certainly not a run, a run of the mill bear here. It's not by any means. Mill no bear. Okay. So, <laughs> shall we move on out of the bathroom to some other uh, other scenery? Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Are the cameras still on? We're on again. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Okay. Let's uh. Let's have a changement de venue, n'est-ce pas? 